Hello, I'm Mark Baer. I'm with Greg Hawthorne. The conversation is about the concept of manifesting on the personal level and on the community level. Making art. You've been making art your whole life. Um, we're in your Sand City studio, or we're in your Sand City house. We yes. were downstairs yeah. in your Sand City uh, oh, That's our warehouse. Though. Warehouse downstairs. I've been in your beautiful gallery in Big Sur. Um, we, we've just had a lecture here that you did, and um, one of the things that has always interested me, particularly about you, is that you've had this long career making art. You've been making art almost your whole life. Right. Uh, you still have your passion. Uh, you're still learning. Yes. Uh, and what is it? You, you know, what was the, what is the energy now that, that, that drives you forward in the art itself? What do you, because we never, we never get to the final end. We are always trying to get better. We're always, uh, when you're making art, you're involved in the overall art conversation and you're communicating with people past and future. In art, you're always moving on. You, gotta, you can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again. It's, uh, it's very important that you keep pushing your boundaries, right? And you know, you gotta know how far the edge is and how far you can keep on going. You can take chances, you know, you have to fall off the edge every once in a while because you went a little bit too far. You need to keep doing that. That's what makes the juice. That's why you, you keep doing it. If you, if you don't wanna do it and you wanna repeat yourself, you might as well quit. And once you start to repeat yourself, then you're, you're done. You need to always keep it, keep it fresh. And, um, and it might be just a small change, maybe it's a change that people don't even see that's, that you've tried that is, is working. And, or something that you did was just out there and you painted over it, but it was, you just kept, it just keeps the, the whole thing moving in the right direction. And that, that's upward and making better things. Now, sometimes as artists get older, they, uh, they don't improve. The, that much. They're, they're not willing to take that risk, that chance. Whereas some artists, as they get older, I mean, the stuff just gets better and more interesting or more dynamic, more, and it's different. You know, people will say, well, I like this style back or her style back, you know, 20 years ago. But now they're doing this thing, which I'm not crazy about, but it's different. So that's, that's great. Everybody's in the communication uh, and has a view and has, a, has their own interpretation of it. And plus, you have to do it. So your, your conversation with yourself, I mean, you want to be surprised at the end yeah. of the day. Oh, of course. And you still get that kick and you still oh, get yeah. that surprise. Yeah, no, you have to have that surprise. I mean, that's what makes it worthwhile. That's what makes it special. I mean, uh, being an artist is the greatest thing in the whole world. There's nothing better. I mean, it's not about fame and it's not about money. It's about the, uh, it's pushing yourself to another limit. And it's, that's what it's all about. So one of the things that I feel with, is very important in personal manifestation is that you are in somehow in a community of artists, that the people around you are working hard. Uh, and I've noticed in your gallery that you've done it in a way that both reflects your tastes and seems to, when it's in there with your work, seems to be speaking in your work. In your gallery, there seems to be a conversation among the art. It seems to be, you know, I don't think you chose what's there because you think it's a fast sale. I think you chose it because it's coherent. Well, it, I don't know if it's so much coherent. It, I, I pick the pieces because they're, they're fabulous. Some pieces that, they, you know, when they impress me, I, you know, I always figured that how could you walk in the gallery and not purchase one of these? I mean, they're, I mean, they inspire me. They're exciting. I mean, an Albert Paley, a Jesus Morales, a Michael Gustafson, uh, you know, all these guys, Max DeMoss, they are really wonderful in their particular genre that uh, I, if you can't find anything better in the country. So you, uh, if you don't buy it from me, then you're not, you're not, you're making a mistake. But just living in that environment that you've created down there, uh, how much energy does that give you? 
Uh, oh, in other words, the other, does the other art give you as much energy as your own art? Oh, and, and does it magnify what you do at the end of the day? Yeah, well, when I go down there, I, I, just like yourself, when you walk in there, I enjoy walking in and just feeling the energy of all the pieces. And, you know, we move things around every once in a while to see how that is interpreted differently by different locations sometimes, just to see how it feels. And it's amazing. All of a sudden, it just it creates another, another energy in itself. And oftentimes, people walk in, they didn't notice it before, and they'll walk into it and just go... God, I love that piece. And then it's either bought or they just they comment on it and so forth. And, it, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that the piece, you know, because even if you put a fabulous piece and the location just doesn't seem to gel with it, just by moving it a little bit, it's just like, wow, it makes it's such a difference. And that happens in your home, too, when you go to put it in your home or, or that you do it or you look at it and one morning it has a feel and then a different feel in the evening. I always say in, in art, the past and the present and the future live at once because you're living with every piece of art or you're creating out of all the art that you've looked at. And how has over the years um, your process and your uh, appreciation of the other art grown as you've had to struggle going deeper and deeper and deeper into your own creation? Right. Well, I, you don't really have to work at it that hard. I think that it, that um, uh, the artist is the mirror of society, mirror of, uh, of artwork and all your uh, different interpretations on life. You know, you'd, if you start to think about it too much or intellectualize it, you ruin it. You know, it's kind of like, like anything, you know, um, you know, it, making love. You don't think about it that much. You just kind of move and, and enjoy the whole spirit of everything and get into the person that you're with. And it's the same thing. You, you know, the, uh, in art, it is, you get the spirit of it, the emotional spirit. It's, you know, if you try to intellectualize everything, you're just going to ruin it. Just let it come out. Let it go. Be natural. When a baseball player gets up to swing the bat, he doesn't think of all the different parts of it. You know, I got it cocked back. Am I going to keep my eye on the ball? He doesn't think of all that. He's looking where the ball is. He's going to hit that ball. And as you become a professional in anything, your concentration is where that ball is going to go, not how you're going to do it. You just get it there. And that's the same with an artist. An artist thinks of where he wants to go or she and looks at it. This is where I want to go and goes there. Kind of what you're saying is a lot of it is being very disciplined with your work habits, right. uh, showing up at a certain time, a number of hours a day, right. being present for it, yes. and, and, and the actual just doing of the work. I, I assure you that you don't wait for inspiration. No, I have plenty. You, so. you, you show up and, and, and you do it, and it's, 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 a, it's a work day, you go in that zone, um, and then you see what what happens. So surprises and amazes you. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it flows and, you know, the unfortunate thing is that um, because of society and all the different things that we have to do, I mean, it's just part of your life, you know, you have to eat and you have to do all the different things. It'd be great if we could just sequester ourselves in the studio and just forget about the rest of the world and, and live there for a few days. I don't know if the art would be as good. Yeah, you probably wouldn't. I mean, it definitely has an uh, you have to have that influence. You have to be torn apart and just be, I got to get back to the studio type of feel. And that's, that's what makes it probably better. Yeah, right? So you've stayed hungry. Oh, yeah. Always. And that's, that's really magical. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I don't know how magical it is. It's, it's just my personality. Well, and I just You're, you're very it. lucky. Yeah, I love you it. Know, and anybody in art that's had a sustained, lifelong career in it. Yeah. And, and I, I suppose it's something... If you don't love it, it's something that you shouldn't do. No, I tell young artists, if this is not what you really want to do all the time, don't bother. I mean, you know, do it fun for yourself and entertain yourself. But as a profession, it's not a part-time job. It's never been a part-time job. It's, it's full-time. It's a full commitment. And, uh, you know, and if you want to put that commitment out there and you want to work hard at it and you and you enjoy it every single, you sleep it. I mean, you, you're always thinking about what's going to be on the next thing. You can't wait to get up every morning to do it. Then you're in the right, you're in the right location. 
So you've had a life of waking up in the morning and being, I can't wait. It's yeah. exciting. No, no, it's And uh, it's so um, amazing over years, the variety that, that you've allowed yourself to go yeah. into. Yeah, I, th I think that uh, for me, it's, you know, a lot of some different artists, Giacometti is a great example. He kept doing the same figure for years and years and years. It's not my personality. It worked for him, but it's not my personality. Uh, Picasso jumped from Cubism to, you know, the Blue Period to the, you know, Rose Period, and then he went into all the different uh, sectional and the different figures and ceramics and sculptures. That's a little bit more my personality. I mean, it's just, it's fun. I, the uh, stayed with one wife, and but yeah, had changed my art up quite a bit. <laughs> it's a different kind of program. And uh, you know, a Hawthorne is a Hawthorne at right. the end of the day. Exactly. Do you kind of look, loop back sometimes and you, you know, go to back to art 20 years ago and, think, and pick up, th do, in other words, your themes are your kind of your themes. Do you kind of loop back on themes? Oh yeah, I do, and look at some of the previous work and you yeah. know, that was, a, that was a hit and that uh, was, I did something there that I forgot that I used to you do forgot, that. You forgot, yes. Yeah, so then I can look at it and go, yeah, so that would be cool in the present thing that I'm working on, you know, that kind of thing. So, yes, I, I borrow back from my own work, right. which is, uh, but, you know, the overall feel is quite different, but there's a certain element of it that Vocabulary, I... Vocabulary, uh, yeah, right. I guess. And That's what you call it. You, you, you forget over, over time. Right. Uh, we were just downstairs and looking at a, a piece that you did, what, 30 years ago with the... Because color changed when you came to California. Yeah, well, it changed. Uh, well, that was the piece that you're referring to was actually in the 70s. Yeah. So that's a um, pretty long time ago. But yeah. um, that particular piece is, uh, you know, the colored definition back in the 70s is quite a bit different than today, you know. Uh, and what, w the way I work and the way that people interpret everything, you know, the colors around them. Moving to California definitely from the Midwest did have a color change too and an attitude and a lot of different changes. And uh, I think that I've grown with, uh, with my art and I've grown in my space too. I have more space here in California than I did back in Michigan. So it allows me to do larger pieces and you know, expand on it. I have a view of the ocean that obviously has some effect. You know, I was just loved hearing this message today, professionalism, work a day, business, uh, and, and, and that the, the lecture today was the, the business of art. Yeah. Uh, artists don't talk about it. it. It's almost as if you don't, it, it's like one of those things, oh, you're an artist, you don't have to talk about money or business. Or, oh, well, that's what's so and, ridiculous. And, and, that's another one of those, uh, you know, uh, things that people bring up. And I mean, that is so stupid. It doesn't even make any sense at all, you know. It, um, it's from my standpoint, anyway. It's the you know, that it's supposed to magically happen and you're supposed to, everything, you don't have to worry about it, you're an artist, you don't have to worry about money, you don't have to worry about any, anything like that. It's, or that starving's okay if you're an artist. Yeah, <laughs> you know. that, that, yeah, that's really worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, never bought into that program. Uh, you know, it's the, uh, that cut off your ear syndrome is not part of the, yeah. part of the, and, and, the and fun because parts. No one, because no one buys your work doesn't make you a genius. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, no, no, that doesn't, all those, the, life's about living it. Living it from the standpoint of doing good work, giving it at a fair price so that people want to buy it because they just go, wow, that is really a sensational piece. And then also, if they buy it, then they just go, oh, it's fantastic, and they're so proud of it. So what they do is they want to encourage your program too because they want to help you because they own one of your pieces now. They want you they're, to become... They're invested. They're invested. Yeah. So they're part of their sales team. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's all logic. And one of the things that... One of the words that you used that I thought was very interesting um, when, when I was down at your, your, your gallery was you've managed to make lifestyle part of your art. Right. Where it is, your surroundings, uh, how you, you know, the integrity of, of your life. Uh, that's kind of part of what, people are buying the whole package. Well, they're buying the whole package, but the whole package is uh, what I want to have. I want, you know, 
I wanted to live in an artistic environment. I want to live in a, a lifestyle that, you know, th that I have a beautiful wife and, uh, and my children grow up in a, in a balanced way. Uh, I'm not looking to be eccentric to that my children are going to be eccentric and, and crazy. I want them to feel good about themselves, feel good about the family, feel good about the artwork they're creating. It's, uh, it's a very centralized program. And, it, and you don't, I've always told my children, you do not have to act eccentric. You're already eccentric. You're already... I chill, you're already crazy, so don't don't yeah, work. Go at the it. other way. Work, yeah, work, try, work, let's work, try work. to be fit in society. Let, let's work the other way. Right. We don't need to stand. Try to stand out. Make your work stand out, not you. You know that's the most important thing. You're so, you're just going with the flow. Don't don't try to 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 uh, change everybody's idea. You can change it through your artwork. Change through, it to your art and your personality. Your personality can just try to be so that you can enjoy it. You're already pretty out there. My son is one of the, an amazing ski racer and, and loves to take chances. My daughter is the same way. She's just, you know, jump off a cliff. I run her, one time when she had her boyfriend there, she said, well, let's go off here. And he says, oh, that's a cliff here. And he says, well, let's go. And she do dove off. And then the guy looks at me and says, your daughter is nuts. I said, yes, you haven't figured that out yet. And so I think that it's, important that you be who you are that's that's the most important thing and at the same time don't try to rock the boat just to rock the boat rock you it know? rock it in your art you rock it in your art rock yeah. it in your personality yeah. rock it in your things because of who you are not yeah. because of something that you've made up or, or read about or you're going to get a bigger response because you do something again i really admire you for the values that you bring as, as much as the artwork and yet the values are in the art uh, like I say the family of art that you've created in your gallery is coherent to me okay. uh, it looks like it belongs it looks like it's having a conversation it looks like no other gallery yeah but the difference is that every, our, all our pieces are unique that are in the gallery which yeah. is one but all those people that are in there are professionals. They're all good. They're, they, and, you know, and when I say that they're good, it's my opinion that they're good. I picked out these different artists. And I think because they impress me. They, they, and so you, and I'm a professional. I know how the work is made. I know the quality of a lot of these things. So if it's impressing me, then you as a, you know, that is not doing this all the time, is not an artist all the time, it's it should blow your socks off. I mean, yeah. you know, quite honestly, because it's it's really impressing me. So it should knock you out, and that's that's the goal. It and should be like, wow, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And it does. <laughs> uh, so let's let's uh, shift gears a, a bit. So uh, I, again, so on the personal, you know, the manifestation, it does help to have good art around you, to be looking at art to be hungry and passionate to create the art, to have a drive to, the right drive to me is that you want your art to be better. Right. Or, or I don't know if better is the right word, deeper, farther, yeah. more, you want to be more emerged, you want to see more, you want to see what happens next. The outside things, the fame, the this, the that, the, that's illusionary. And it, 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 takes, it takes that personal passion, it takes having, um, having a good support system to, to keep this going. This is the same thing that happens with the community. We're in Sand City. So my, my question is, how does a art community manifest itself? There are, well, Sand City is a, is a great place, by the way. I mean, it's just, uh, they're really supportive of the arts. They're supportive of all the different artists that are here. Um, it's a little enclave, I mean, it's only a mile wide and, uh, you know, half mile deep and uh, right along the ocean. And there's a lot of artists that work here uh, and, they, and they keep that spirit is, is going. But I, I think that Sand City right now, we're going through a flux because we're trying to work on making it even better. We're trying to get murals and public sculpture and we're trying to improve our roads and and really start to you know do anything. And our present mayor is really working hard to get things like that going. And, and it's uh, and it, it's exciting. We're going to have a new city manager here shortly, and um, 
I was, I'm in the process of working with the city on choosing whoever that person's going to be. And we've got some wonderful candidates, and I'm sure it's kind of gotten down to, the, to a few that are at the final list, and all of them would be terrific. And it's, uh, arts are our central part of their program, too. They, and uh, the, vitalization of the vitalizing this community to go on to the next level is what they're all looking for. And uh, I'm very excited about what's coming up. Yeah, so for, for personal manifestation, it's very, you know, one of the things if you're an artist, you say, well, do I need to be in Los Angeles? Do I need to be in New York? Do I need to be in San Francisco? Uh, it's very, one has the tendency, if you're living in a, not in a, in a big urban area, you feel um, you're off the map. You, you, you feel you're, you're not part of that. And, and uh, to have a vital center, to have a place that people say, oh, like Sand City, could be on the map. It could be a place that would draw artists and people, you, you say you're, you're making your art in this area, it, it has acceptability. It's, it's okay to be in a, it's not parochial. Right. You're well, in the world. Well, I don't think that Sand City is ever gonna be New York City, you know, no matter how, whatever happens to it. So it's not gonna change that much. And it's not gonna be, um, it's not gonna have that vibrant, you know, art scene that's gonna, that is in New York. But what it does is it, it has a great spot to live. Big Sur, Monterey, uh, Carmel, uh, Sand City, we're all on the ocean. We're, we're, we're enjoying the fresh air. We're enjoying the spirit of this location. That is far more important to me than living in New York City so I could be with a bunch of other artists that, you, you know. You can now are, all see on Instagram. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's not, you know, you, it, you can see things from all over the world, you know, on Pinterest and different parts yeah. of the, the thing. You don't have to be in any one area, and I think the goal is to be whatever your personality likes. I mean, some people love that congestion and that, uh, you know, the, the noise and the spirit of uh, the city, and some of us, I just, I love Sand City, Big Sur, I love all this down here, walking down, having, walking on the beach in Carmel. These are all part of my life, and that's what I want. And I, I don't really give a damn about the other stuff. The other stuff, I, as long as I can make my living and do my art, then I am stoked. I do not have to be, because all those people that are, believe me, in New York City would love to be where we are right here, right now. I mean, a lot of them. I mean, they, they love the hubba, but where, where they go on vacation, they come out to visit us. We live the vacation. We go to see them when we when we gotta go the other way. I go to New York City for my vacation. I live in the vacation. Uh, you know, you've been instrumental in making Sand City an artist town, uh, where it, it's wonderful to be here because up and down the block, people are making things. Right. Uh, it, it's nice to live around where people are creating. Yes. That that is a value. Uh, you have Carmel and Big Sur to sell the stuff, but this is a place where stuff is made, mm -hmm. and uh, an artist can live in his his studio, and uh, and you put your money where your mouth is, and you invest it early, yes. and uh, and got deep in and, and involved in the, the local politics, and and that's not that's relatively unusual for an artist. Yeah, but uh, I've never followed any particular book. Yeah. And I've just kind of, uh, I think there's, you know, how long I'm going to be in politics, I have no idea. It's, you know, th it's uh, being on the city council. But it, what is great is that uh, I'm, I want to give back to the city. I mean, it's given me a lot of positive things. And for me to take a little of my time, I've been uh, fortunately successful enough to have a, a nice lifestyle. And so, what I want to do is give back to Sand City. And I, there's a lot of tough questions that are being asked and done right now and everything else. So that's my part, is I'm actually trying to give a business sense to the, uh, to the city and help and do whatever I can and work with my other council members to make this a better place. And I think the whole group is, is doing, doing great. Because yeah. so. one thing, I, uh, 
next door to us you have uh, Don Davis's studio, who's put this amazing place for public events, right. for uh, for speakers. I mean, it just keeps the the area keeps getting more sophisticated, more interesting. Oh, yeah. uh, all the time. I mean, Don is is really moved out and and really helped the city. I mean, he's a real positive person and wants to have uh, carry the arts and work on the mural system and stuff. My children have gotten very involved. They both have their studios here. I mean, we are now moving in a direction, and we wanted to keep encourage other young artists to come here and to work and keep it going. Yeah. In other words, you can't be New York, but. You know, Marfa Texas did pretty good out of art. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Sand City is like, you know, it, it was the place where the box store was. Right. Yeah, now it's starting to change. N now it's, it's... Some other po positive things happening. Uh, uh, West End is a, is a very positive thing. Right. Uh, yeah. West End's very exciting. Yes. Um, you know, I think that, you know, what we just need to do is make... Sand City is going to be Sand City, and we're going to make it is the best we can and enjoy it and then make it move on to the 21st century in a positive art fashion, I hope, that will make everybody proud. Any last words here? Just, uh, they, everybody should just keep on working, that's all. Keep working on the arts. You are watching Conversations and Collaborations. For all episodes, go to markdavidbear.com.